Bola and welcome to the Fiji Times online news portal, The Lens at 177. Today I have the privilege, the honour and the privilege, of uh, being in the office of uh, a Deputy Prime Minister and uh, Minister for Trade, Cooperatives, MSMEs and Communications, the Honourable uh, Mr. Kamikamita. Uh, you know, it's not often that uh, I get to uh, come and meet with uh, someone as uh, esteemed as the Minister and uh, we are so honoured to be here. Bull and welcome to the show. Naka. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as a minister, I'm just going to ask you, you know, a question that I've asked uh, other ministers that have appeared on the show six months on. Mm -hmm. You know, how's it been? Naka. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's, it's now eight, almost eight months. Uh, almost eight, eight months on. Yeah. And um, I think uh, all things considered, yes. uh, I think we're doing uh, well. Um, you know, so, uh, some of us are a bit perfectionist, so you know we try and do more than what we right. probably physically can do. But I think uh, genuinely, I think uh, you know we've uh, we've done well. You know, when you think about uh, even you know the. I think when we reflect back on how we got into government, mm. uh, you know the the way the constitution was set up, yes. it was almost as if uh, they didn't expect any other government to come into office. Right. So it was to unravel uh, what was there, yes. and then try and set up the government as we would like it set up. Yes, uh, has taken some time, and uh, but. Uh, within all that, uh, you know, we've uh, one of the great things of the first eight months for me, particularly, is uh, just delivering on the promises that we uh, uh, undertook. Eh? And, uh, you know, we said we were gonna, going to get rid of uh, Bill 17 or Act 22. It's right. gone. Yes. We said we were going to uh, take away MIDA. Right. That's in the garbage bin. Right. Uh, we said uh, you know we'd bring back the GCC. Uh, that's already in process. Yes. Uh, you know we said that we'd uh, remove uh, the laws about uh, maiden names. It's one of the most stupid laws ever introduced in Fiji. Right. That's now gone. So yes. and um, you know the, it's a start of a, of a process that I believe is a is a step towards developing the new Fiji. Right. And so I think from, from that perspective, uh, we are doing well. I know that all the ministers are working hard. The prime minister is working very hard. Right. Uh, you know, certainly in uh, our ministry, we are trying to do what we can do to uh, yes. uh, keep the economy going. Uh, and, and, you know, the financial uh, status of Fiji at the moment is uh, very good. You know, we're, right. We're talking about uh, good economic growth this year. Yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, so you know, it's going to be about 8% according to Reserve Bank. Right. Uh, liquidity is good, uh, credit is growing. Right. Uh, so people are lending more money. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the default on debts are low. Okay. Uh, I was just getting some other data from Reserve Bank. I think up to April uh, compared to last year, exports are up by about 23%. Wow. So, you know, the, you know, there's a lot to be thankful for. Yes. Uh, and of course, you know, uh, you know, we have to think about, you know, just the headwinds that are there, you know, the uh, technically New Zealand is in recession, yes. Australia is yes. facing problems. Yeah. But, you know, overall, I think we, you know, we're doing um, uh, very well. And, uh, but, you know, uh, to be honest, uh, there is so much more to do. Eh? Yes. And uh, that's the exciting part. There's a lot of promises that we're still working on. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, the country will see uh, those decisions uh, come through over the next uh, yeah. couple of months, you know, into next year. Uh, but, uh, you know, in terms of overall assessment, I think, uh, you know, as a government with three parties, yes. uh, we've, uh, we are working very well together. You know. uh, I'm just going to uh, put this question to you because sure. the leader of the opposition yes. also appeared on the show and said uh, that the coalition government 
uh, has only fulfilled 30 percent or 33 percent of its promises. Yeah. But he did not state which ones uh, you haven't fulfilled. Yeah, yeah. So you know, if you'd like to just uh, well, we, I mean, we you know we've got four years to fulfill our promises. Yeah. Uh, you know, like. Uh, you know, and uh, what we are doing is systematically, you know, you know to change laws, for example. Yeah. Uh, we are not doing what they are doing, which is to be just rush through and get laws passed. Eh? Yeah. We are trying to step through and uh, ensure that laws are changed uh, after due process. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, you know, they've been there for 16 years. We are unraveling 16 years of mismanagement and yeah. uh, very poor leadership. Eh? Yeah. Yes. And so it's going to take time, and uh, so uh, you know, tells is another uh, good example of a promise made. Eh? Yes. Uh, you, know? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to allow the youth of Fiji to no longer be able to pay their debts is a significant, uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, benefit. Eh? Like I, I come from a generation where we never had to pay tells, right? And so when we started off at work, we had no issues, eh? Yes. But, uh, and so, you know, I mean, uh, I suppose the leader of opposition is the leader of opposition. He'll be, he's entitled to what he, right. he wants to say. But uh, I think as a government, we are very focused on uh, delivering on all our promises. Uh, and, uh, you know, the government of uh, the people of Fiji understand. Yes. After 16 years, this country is in a mess. Mm. And so it will take time to... Uh, to fix and uh, overall, I think they're happy with uh, what we're doing and what we're trying to do for the country. Huh. I'll just move into SMS, SM, uh, SMEs. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, as I understand it, uh, you know, your office has quite a number of incentives and uh, yes. initiatives in place. If you sure. could just shed sure. a bit of light on yeah. that. Yes. Yeah, firstly, I think, uh, you know, with the medium, small to medium enterprises, yes. uh, one of the things uh, that probably is, uh, most of people in Fiji are not aware is uh, the funding for uh, MSMEs is not only in my ministry, okay. it's in other ministries. So whilst uh, my allocation uh, is there, mm -hmm. the total allocation for small to medium businesses yeah. that we've assessed is about 80 million. All together, yes, yes. Right. So that includes assistance to youth uh, business, to women right. entrepreneurship, yes. uh, and some of the those grants come under us. Um, yeah, but uh, you know, so it's quite a, com a large amount of money that's yes. targeted at that sector, right. uh, and so. Uh, and you know the you know the data showing that it's a very important part of the Fijian economy. Yeah. It's about 18 percent of GDP, yes. and uh, mm. generates up to 60 percent employment. Eh? Yeah. So just very briefly, in terms of the the um, the uh, programs that we have, uh, one of the very popular ones is called the uh, uh, Integrated uh, Human Resource Development uh, Program, eh? right. or IHRDP. Right. It's a one-third uh, contribution by the applicant, right. two-thirds by government. Uh, and sometimes, uh, given the right conditions, uh, you can actually go and borrow that uh, contribution, the one-third, yeah. from the FDBA. Okay. And it's a very it's a capped at a hundred thousand, right. and it's uh, for uh, uh, people that are aspiring to uh, uh, do business. Eh? It's um, and uh, we find it's quite a popular program. Yeah. Uh, funding is up to a maximum of one hundred and fifty thousand. And it's quite, uh, you know, quite. Uh, so who who can apply for that? Yeah. So sort of yeah. So the basically the um, essentially um, you know the cooperative businesses, uh, individuals can apply for that. Yeah. Uh, we tend to look at um, those in more semi, peri urban or rural yeah. uh, entrepreneurs. Yes. Um, so that's one. Uh, we also have a national export strategy. Yeah. Um, that's to help uh, export. Uh, small to medium business that are wanting to do exports right. uh, and so um, there's another grant called the uh, young entrepreneur scheme right. and that's for young uh, entrepreneurs eh? yes uh, and uh, that have some unique ideas or okay. in, in any field in yeah. any field yeah. right. and we try and help there there's um, 
the Northern Development Program. That was a program that's been there for some time. Mm. That's targeted at um, activating the Northern Division. Mm. Um, so the, that program also is available. And then there's also what's called the TEP or the Trade Enhancement uh, Program. Mm. And that's more, uh, it's like a non, uh, it's a $500 grant for small business uh, or startups eh? yeah. little, 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 little little yeah, yeah, yeah like correct yeah. yeah so those are the kinds of uh, um, supports available um, um, hopefully over time we can increase the levels of funding yeah. uh, but uh, you know certainly we're happy with what uh, is there yes. quite apart from that there's a lot of um, uh, private sector and donor led uh, initiatives eh? right. uh, and um, we kind of, we are working very closely with the donors to try and uh, develop uh, if you like a total support system for MSMEs eh? yeah. so like in other words you know for someone who wants to do business mm -hmm. there is uh, support available I'm call right now I'm calling it a uh, SME ecosystem. Right. So, like within this ecosystem, if someone wants support for for to prepare their financial accounts, mm -hmm. uh, to to prepare for, to get a loan, for example, um, <coughs> we we have an entity that's funded also by the ministry called the Business Assistance Fiji. Right. Uh, it's a collaboration of the private sector. Uh, with the New Zealand government, yeah. and uh, they um, help with the financial statement preparation, yeah. uh, marketing plans, uh, strategic plans, um, you know, that kind of uh, assistance. Eh? Okay. Uh, looking at website uh, development. Okay. So that's one arm, and then there's other aspects of, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we, we work very closely with FDB yeah. to try and ensure they have loans targeted at uh, MSMEs. Yes. Um, yeah, so there's there's any and a good ecosystem out there. The BSP Bank yeah. is now doing some work in uh, mentoring of uh, small to medium enterprises. Okay, yeah, it's going to be on an annual basis yeah. for five years. So you know, that's the way we continue to help yeah. and encourage uh, medium, small to medium enterprises. Eh? So it's quite a comprehensive. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, you know, the, uh, we are hoping uh, by the the end of our first 12 months, uh, which is another four months, mm -hmm. we will have a very clearly articulated structure. Eh? Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, we couldn't get it in the last budget, right. but I'm pretty keen by the next budget, we'll have a better articulated uh, support structure for MSMEs. Okay. And working with uh, everybody, eh? private sector, donors, mm -hmm. um, yeah. to try and really um, help the sector continue to grow. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Minister, and we'll be right back after a short break. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Welcome back to the show. And uh, we're speaking to the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for SMS, MSMEs. Uh, about MSMEs and the assistance programs that are available, uh, uh, Mr. Mano Kamikamida. Uh, uh, just a bit earlier, uh, the Deputy PM was uh, just detailing uh, uh, to us what programs uh, they are available. There's quite an extensive number, and as you've just heard, uh, you know the government has um, actually got about 80 million dollars in the various ministries to help uh, micro and medium and small enterprises. Uh, Minister, some people might not be aware of how do they access this yeah. uh, assistance. So if you could just speak a bit about sure, that. Sure, yeah. The, um, basically, the, the um, 
We were waiting for the formalization of uh, funding from finance. Yeah. So in the next uh, two weeks, yes. there will be an announcement uh, and then we'll put out uh, an invitation for those who wish to to uh, to apply yeah. uh, and specify the criterion as well. Eh? Yes. Um, you know, and like I said, uh, there's you know there's other assistance in other ministries as well, and um, uh, you know the you know there's a lot of um, uh, you know they have their own criterion as well. Eh? Yeah. So the um, I think uh, you know you, what we probably might have to do is actually. Uh, uh, come out with a, a like some sort of specific uh, outline that covers each ministry. Yes. In okay. fact, uh, mm. uh, just uh, on uh, Tuesday we had a workshop right. with all the other ministries right. uh, to try and talk about how we can collaborate better okay. to sort of coordinate uh, the assistance yes. to to the MSMEs. Eh? Okay. So uh, yeah, but uh, we certainly keep the. Uh, what I can suggest is uh, to those who really want to uh, grow their business or develop their business, yeah. just keep their eyes out. We'll, yes. uh, we'll be advertising soon in terms of the expression of interest. Okay. And then uh, you know, we can then uh, continue and begin the engagement with the, yeah. and those who, uh, you know, obviously there's, uh, there's the uh, you know, offering for the, uh, the youth. Yes, as I mentioned, and uh, you know the very small businesses. Yeah. So you know those who are doing corner shops and uh, yeah. uh, popsicle shops yes. and um, yeah. yeah, those uh, businesses as well. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know we we often hear this uh, this uh, it's an age old uh, adage. The last government used it a lot that the private sector is the engine room yeah. for economic growth. Sure. Uh, you know, but we hear it. We've heard it before. Uh, yeah. But how is the coalition government actually going to put it in action? Yeah. Thank you. The, you know the um, you know the um, you know that particular aspect or thinking of uh, in terms of uh, management of com economy is very important eh? yeah. uh, and largely because uh, you know the, the government is not uh, uh, is in the process of uh, is in the business of assisting its people. Yeah. It's not in the business of doing business, eh? right? So, uh, so uh, you know, so that um, 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 you know, the, the the you know, for businesses to thrive, yes, uh, they thrive when government uh, gives them the uh, the room to actually do things, eh? yes. Um, and uh, you know that's certainly what we've tried to do. Uh, you know, when we got into government, you know, a classic example was in the previous government. It's no secret. Yes. Um, it, but government interference was uh, normal. Eh? Right. Uh, let's be honest. Yes. Uh, and uh, in the case of the Laudala hangar, right. You know, all of a sudden, um, some letter comes from. Uh, from a AFL saying stop work on a thirty million dollar right. project. project. Yes. No reasons given. Mm -hmm. uh, no. Uh, uh, and um, as the private sector watching, yes. Uh, the first question they say is, what's going to happen to us when we start a project? Right. Will there be similar right? similar interference? Yes. And it uh, impacts on the. Overall confidence. Eh? So right. one of the first things we did was get into government and fix that uh, issue. Right. Uh, Lodal is now in the process of completing the hangar, right. uh, which will serve not the, their customers. Mm -hmm. But again, it's a signal that you know this government going forward will not will allow private sector to do what they do best, which is. Uh, work and uh, grow the economy yeah. and uh, work together with uh, with government. Eh? The, the other proof in the pudding is uh, uh, you know how the budget was developed. Yes. Uh, we had the National Economic Summit, Summit right. yes. uh, then we had uh, consultations mm -hmm. um, uh, so then you know, in, you know, with the private sector um, and so this is the new type of way of uh, doing things. Eh? Yes. Uh, that will um, endeavor to um, 
to actually um, consult right. uh, and so to make sure that um, you know when we do uh, roll out outcomes that um, and have the general support of the um, of the business sector, right. uh, because ultimately, if you want to grow the economy, yes, uh, you need to have the, the private sector on side, mm. rather than uh, uh, not uh, refuse to work with them. Eh? Right. Um, and so, so uh, yeah, it's a it's a it's a fundamental part of uh, managing an economy right. is working with the private sector, and I think. Uh, we've not only talked about it, we've actually shown in our action. Eh? Yes. And that will continue. Uh, you know, any major strategies or any major economic decisions that are made, there will be due consultation. I think uh, the Honorable Minister for Finance has, uh, has been doing that, as, um, like with all of us. Um, you know, I've been having consultations with the real estate industry. Yeah. Uh, I met the scrap metal industry a few days ago. Mm -hmm. The scrap metal industry came in here and they were saying uh, we were not sure whether we were coming in to get told off. <laughs> <laughs> or some new law was coming and mm -hmm. I said no, I'm just here to listen to you guys and mm -hmm. try and understand uh, yeah. you know, how you run your businesses and whether there's things uh, that we need to do together. We agreed that we need to relook at the law yes. from that meeting. So, you know, that's how mm -hmm. we try and collaborate. Eh? Um, and, uh, you know, so uh, certainly in my ministry, you know, we'll continue to engage. Uh, you, know, you know, sometimes we won't agree fully on matters, right. but I think if we hear each other and then try and work together to find solutions, that's... Uh, that that allows uh, the all key components in the economy to move, eh? mm. and so yeah, so that's then the the way we are interacting with the private sector. Okay. Um, I'm probably you know like certainly in terms of accessibility, uh, you know I have been very clear that this ministry uh, is the conduit for private sector issues, right. uh, and so yeah, there also. Um, uh, yeah, it's a it's a very important part of the uh, of uh, this government's uh, strategy, right. and um, you know the, if we continue on this path, uh, it will uh, give more confidence to the private sector in wanting to do things to grow their businesses. Eh? Right. Okay, uh, Minister, you know, is, do you have any update on the Wallace issue? You know, given yeah. the huge cost, of sixty yeah. million dollars. Yes. Sure. Yeah, it's, a, it's actually a, a lot more. The, the, the uh, in Parliament, I said that it was one hundred and thirty million. Because and that's because the sixty million is only what was disclosed in Parliament through the budgetary allocations. Eh? Right. There was a, a, quite a bit of money taken from a trust fund. Right, and uh, used for all Yes, so so yeah, the, the we sort of uh, we had to wait for some additional funding from uh, from the budget. Right. So uh, there's still a bit of uh, work to do. Yes. Uh, and uh, yeah, we will. Uh, I, I, can't, I don't want to promise when it's going to come out, but uh, because there's um, uh, there's a, uh, there's not only the financial component. Yes. There's also the technological component. Eh? Yes. Uh, just to assess the equipment. Uh, so we're collaborating with uh, uh, some other inter international agencies to help on that side. Right. Uh, so is that like investigating? Investigating the just yes. to a review, eh? a review. Yes. Yeah, right. I mean, of the you know whether you know you know with technology, there's always issues around obsolescence. For example, eh? right. if you're buying equipment that is going to become obsolete, yes, uh, these kind of things we want to uh, understand. Eh? Yes, but uh, you know it's important. That I think the uh, most important point to make about Wallace is, uh, particularly this government, we are not, we don't have any issue with the service, because right. it's a great service to the people of Fiji. Yes. The concern is the process in which the money was spent. Yes. There was right. no justification at all, right. uh, in terms of cabinet paper or any. It's like you're starting a business and you don't. You spend all this money and you don't have a, a way of understanding how you're gonna, you know, earn money to recover the. So there was none of that. No. 
Yeah. Then, yeah. So it's a. It actually falls into irresponsible uh, yes, abuse uh, of uh, yeah. abuse of office and those kind of things. Eh? Yes. But uh, you know that's mm. down the line. I think okay. we need to do fact finding first, and then right. and then get there. But um, you know it's very important uh, that we get to the bottom of the uh, the truth, and uh, then you know at the appropriate time uh, share the findings with the people of Fiji. So people could be taken to task. Uh, I, I won't say uh, everybody's innocent until proven guilty. So uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll, uh, we'll wait till uh, that eventuality. Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay. Thank you for that, Minister. We'll Naka. be back after a short break. Naka. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Welcome back to the show. Uh, you're watching The Lens at 177, the Fiji Times online news portal. And uh, we're having a, a, quite a discussion um, with the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Cooperatives for Communications, uh, important ministry for us in the media, uh, the Honorable Manuel Kamikamida. Uh, Minister, a special task force was set up to investigate Grace Road. And, uh, you know, what have been the findings? Uh, do their permits allow them to remain indefinitely in Fiji? Uh, will they be allowed to continue business as usual, acquiring yeah. properties and all that? You know, uh, people are asking questions. Sure, sure. Yeah, the, um, um, you know, the, what I've been trying to do is uh, keep the, the Grace Road discussions out of the, the okay. media, media for now. Eh? Yes. Just to sort of, uh, because I want to make sure we do the, you know, we carry out the investigations very Right. Uh, so I've, I've, uh, right now, I'm basically, if you, pro you probably worked out, I haven't said much in yes. terms of grace truth. Eh? Yeah. But uh, only to say that um, you know we will, uh, you know, we do undertake. You know, there's an undertaking to certainly disclose uh, you know, the findings to the public once they're available. Right. Uh, there's still a bit of work uh, required as well. Yes. And so once that's done, then we'll uh, we'll make the. Um, the uh, findings known, eh? mm -hmm. yeah. But they will continue to operate as Yeah, so currently uh, they are operating yeah. uh, as normal, yeah. Right. Um, you know, in uh, you or in Parliament you moved the motion about this uh, Japan's plan to yes. discharge uh, yes. nuclear contaminated yes. wastewater. Uh, but the Prime Minister recently made a comment that uh, some might view as him supporting yeah. uh, you know, the discharge yeah. of this wastewater. So is the coalition government united yeah. in, in this issue? Yeah, like uh, I think uh, you will find the Prime Minister will be most likely making some uh, state statements uh, soon right. regarding that issue yes uh, just to clarify yes uh, so i'll leave it to the mm -hmm. prime yes. minister yeah. but uh, you know like uh, you know we are absolutely uh, want to ensure that we protect our, uh, our environment eh? right. well, that is a matter that the uh, whole coalition agrees with yes but uh, i think uh, you know just to show the public yes. uh, that you know there has uh, there are discussions at the moment ongoing in government and uh, the Prime Minister at the appropriate time will uh, make some further announcements on uh, his statement just to uh, yes. clarify. Yeah. Right. Uh, I'll move on to Film Fiji. Uh, sure. You know, the Fiji government knows, produces $200 million. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, so have we paid this? Uh, has this impacted on other companies trying to come into yeah. the country? Yeah. yeah. Firstly, you know, just for maybe the, the benefit of the public, just to explain right. what was happening. Yeah? Basically, um, you know, for the movie industry, uh, the, all the countries that uh, wish to have uh, movie production in their country, they they reimburse part of the spend in the country right. back to the 
to the movie company. Right. So it's called a rebate. Yes. So in other words, let's say for example, if you spend 20 million, right. depending on what the setting is or the agreed percentage is, right. you can in say if it's 20 percent of uh, of uh, of um, 20 million. So that means that's. Um, uh, you know that's four million. Right. Yeah. Um, um, so so that, that's the kind of um, 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 you know the kind of uh, rebate that's paid. Eh? Right. What the previous government did was they uh, um, it was just poor management, I think. Eh? Right. They were reimbursing up to. 75 percent in some cases almost 80 percent of the total cost spend, spend right. in the country yes. so it's almost like uh, everything that comes in is going mm -hmm. out eh? right. um, and unfortunately by the time they realized the amounts owing to by the government of fiji mm -hmm. to these uh, movie companies right. was so high yes um, and what was, in my view, criminal mm -hmm. is they never disclosed it to the public, uh, public of Fiji. Right. It was kept secret. Uh, they started paying 40 million a year from, I think, one or two budgets ago. Yes. But it was never, was paid out never as an approved budgetary expenditure. Right. So how did it, they pay? It? it was being paid from government coffers. Yes. But not through the normal budgetary process. Right. So that's why I was saying in uh, Parliament, I will be writing, I'm just getting the do documentation together, yeah. I will be writing to the Attorney General yeah. to investigate the payments because if you're not, if you're paying money out mm. without going through the budget, yes. that means you're potentially illegally disbursing money yes. on, on Fiji government money. Right. So the Honorable Biman has done the right thing. Yes. He's brought it in as a budgetary allocation of 40 million. Right. So that the people of Fiji know, okay, 40 million is for past uh, expenditure, past expenditure yes. and uh, you know then it's approved that way yes so uh, and so, so that is just to clarify to the people of Fiji that there's a mm -hmm. uh, there's a massive disservice being done to the people of Fiji this is the first time in my 30 plus years of being in government or business right. that I've seen a government uh, disclosing um, amounts that relate to previous uh, yes. 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 Uh, it's unheard of. Yes. And so it's a um, you know big mismanagement. Eh? Right. So, but uh, going forward, yes, uh, what we have done with the uh, with uh, with the uh, film producers is to maintain their confidence. Eh? Right. Uh, for a lot of them, they just wanted certainty that the monies that are owed will be paid. Right. So credit to the CEO for Film Fiji, he sat down with all of them, worked out a, a schedule of payment, yes. and we are now paying the, the amounts out. The sad thing is that this 40 million will be paying for the next couple of years. Right. Because uh, it was almost 200 million a year back. Eh? Yes. So that means for the next four to five years, we'll be paying 40 million every year. And right. it's almost like dead money. So these 40 million we could be spending on our health system, health, health sector, system, uh, water. Yes, right. yes. So that's the that's why it's. Uh, I think when people of Fiji understand it, right. they'll be very annoyed because uh, you know it's uh, again right. uh, very irresponsible uh, management of the government finances. Eh? Right. So so that's um, that's that aspect. So but uh, you know the, because. Uh, the schedule has been entered into and we are trying our best to honor it. Right. The upside is some of the big producers that were in the country have decided to remain. Okay. So what we had to do was actually reduce the rebate. Yes. So it was sitting at, you know, for argument's sake, uh, 70 percent. Right. Uh, now it's down at, uh, um, we've capped it at 4 million per production. Right. Or, twen uh, or 20 percent. Eh? Yes. Uh, so what that means is the, you know, the for the producer, whilst they're getting a lot less, 
because they like Fiji, right. and we were saying that we'll honor the future pay, the payments that have to be paid. Mm. Uh, we we see that uh, large producers are still in Fiji. Okay. Because I, I was worried that um, we might actually destroy the yes, but that the, did, that is not yeah the industry. Yeah. 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 So that's quite fortunate, and uh, obviously, obviously we need to manage it very carefully. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of uh, interaction between myself, Film Fiji, and the Ministry of uh, Finance, right. and also very supportive of the Ministry of Tourism, because yes. uh, there is a big potential in the film industry. Eh? Right. Like, um, for example, in Philippines, they have uh, film companies that are permanently set up in the. Oh, okay. So, in other words, right. basically, people come in, rent the premises yes. and you have film you know particularly the reality series yes. just coming in eh? right. so the, you know all of a sudden you've got a total new revenue stream, stream in the country yes. and not only for a couple of months it's for the whole year because everybody's yeah. renting the studio eh? yeah. yeah so that's something that we're trying to look at okay. if it turns if that works out it'll be a great uh, opportunity and then on the back of that you can build a whole industry so you know you can train more camera people you can get train more yeah. uh, you know editors uh, you know you uh, get people to get involved in uh, no, movie direction yeah Acting, acting, yeah. yeah. Mm. So it's a, you know, there's, there's some good potential there. But mm. uh, again, you know, we are trying to uh, deal with um, the legacy issues. Yes. And at the same time, try and uh, uh, develop the industry further. So yeah, all in all, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, the, it is what it is. Yes. Uh, you know, due to mismanagement, this is where we are. But right. we're doing our best to try and make sure that the industry is not does not suffer. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to move on to the MIDA Act. You know, yeah. the removal of the MIDA yeah. Act for every uh, media organisation was celebrated. Yeah. But has any been any progress in terms of the establishment of the Fiji Media Council? Yeah, thank you. Like, uh, there's no secret. I'm, 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 as the Minister of Communications, I'm very keen to see the establishment of the MIDA Act. Uh, in fact, we are trying to make the announcement uh, fairly soon. Uh, just some uh, final things to do at the company's registrations office. Right. Uh, so hopefully in the next uh, not too distant future, right. uh, they've already nominated the, the council members. There are some very well-respected uh, members of the Fijian society in there. Right. Uh, and so, you know, once the, the council is put in place, then we formalize the structure under which we want to develop press freedom in Fiji. Right. And uh, that will be another milestone in uh, yes. in this uh, this uh, government uh, that might bring up uh, from 33 percent to 35. <laughs> but uh, but uh, you know, the, yeah. we are making you know uh, you know one, like I said one of the things that pleases me most about this government is uh, yeah. we are delivering on uh, what we set out to do. Yes. Um, and uh, you know that you know the the development of a new framework for for the media uh, working with the media mm -hmm. uh, is um, is something that will be welcome not only in Fiji mm -hmm. but uh, internationally. Yes. Like in fact, um, you know, in any of the international forums that I have when I have uh, bilateral discussions, mm -hmm. uh, particularly with the large. Uh, Government support, that support us. I, I make a very uh, important point about uh, Fiji now transitioning. The new Fiji is transitioning to genuine democracy. Thank you. And so, uh, yes. and I talk about the uh, Maida right. and talk about the new media council, and you know, they really, they really appreciate it. Eh? Yes. Uh, and so, you know the. Um, yeah, so the, the media council is coming. I know oh. that uh, there are some doubt uh, doubters <laughs> out there, but uh, you know, credit to the to the um, you know the members of the media, the owners, as well as the the uh, editors and the the leaders of the me each media entity. Mm. They're very committed to getting it done. Eh? So. Uh, 
um, you know, hopefully in the next few weeks we will make the announcement, All right. and then uh, you know we'll have a a formal structure in place to to manage uh, media conduct and also <coughs> on a self-regulating basis, which is what uh, proper democracies do. Yes, thank you. Well, we'll be right back after a short break for our last segment. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Welcome back to The Lens at 177. I'm having a discussion uh, at the office of the Deputy Prime Minister, uh, Honorable Manuel Kamikamila. Uh, Minister, you know, there's been a lot of commentary on social media uh, about the coalition government being too focused on and reminding everyone about what Fiji First didn't do or, or did and, uh, and all that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are saying that you should just get on with the job. Mm -hmm. So just your, your comments on that. Yeah, no, th thank you. In like a, mm -hmm. The first thing I say to that is, uh, if you reflect on uh, the previous government, yes. they were still blaming Ratumara for <laughs> things in the last few years of government. Eh? Right. Uh, and, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, whilst I, uh, I agree, uh, you know, we have to get on and and fix the things that we promised to fix. Yes. I think you have to accept that uh, as, a, as a government, we will keep on reminding the people of Fiji what the previous government did. Eh? Right. Uh, because, uh, uh, you know, it's in, uh, not only politically useful, right. but, uh, it, you know, it's, it's, it's part of reality. Eh? Yes. And sometimes we, we should not forget uh, what's happened in the last 16 years. Eh? Right. Uh, it's... Uh, if anything, uh, it should be a learning to all of us yeah? mm -hmm. uh, on how not to lead our country, yes. uh, on how uh, not to uh, to um, you know to um, to um, to manage the business of uh, government in our country. Yes. Uh, so uh, certainly, I will keep on reminding the people of Fiji, <laughs> whatever uh, you know. But uh, you know when. You know, when when you uh, talk about um, you know getting on with it, uh, absolutely we are getting on with it. Eh? Like uh, you know, uh, we promised to remove tails, we've done, done it. it. Yeah. Uh, we promised to bring back GCC, that's yeah. happened. Um, yeah. Promised to start prepaying USP, yes. that's happening. Yes. Uh, we even uh, promised the uh, okay that we will remove the Solnia Sun. Right. Uh, that's done. Yes. Uh, you know, Maida, we discussed yes. that's, uh, yes, that's done. That's done. Uh, you know, the, that's the steeped laws for women. Yes. You know, the maiden name law. Right. You know, br you know, when you think about it, it's only brought in to persecute uh, Nikona Waikula. You know, yeah. uh, you know the, that's how how sad things were in, the, in our country in yes. the last 16 years. We were bringing in laws to specifically persecute either groups yes. or people. Right. And, uh, and when you get to that level, uh, you should not be running a country. Right. So, uh, you know, that's why I'm going to remind people now and again. Eh? Right. Right. Um, yeah, so, you know, in a short span of time, we are getting on with the business, uh, you know, um, of, of trying to get things going. Yes. Uh, right now, uh, investment Fiji, you know, we are trying to attract more investment into the country. Right. Uh, I, you know, you know, I'll have to check, but I think the pipeline of potential investment into Fiji yes. is now sitting at around about almost five billion. Of people wanting to come. Five billion dollars, eh? yes. in terms, in of, terms potential. of potential. Yeah. So you know, then that's, that's I think when I asked, announced it two, two, three years ago, yeah. was around about two billion. Eh? Right. So there's a big uh, big opportunities developing eh? right. so we are getting on with the business of uh, doing government right. um, you know a big conversation over the years is 
how, dif how difficult it is to do business in Fiji. Eh? Yes. Uh, we have plans in place to to review uh, legislation, to review business processes, try and get them better. Mm. Uh, that's a big focus as well for government. Mm. And then uh, for me as the trade uh, minister uh, and investment, you know, in charge of investment as well, trying to make sure that uh, we speed up the investment. Eh? Right. Uh, one of the key things that we find in Fiji, which is challenging, is. It's so slow to get things going. Eh? Yes. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, we are doing our best to try and get things going. Eh? So yes, mm. we are getting on with business. But uh, you know, I'm a politician at the end of the day, and we'll continue to remind Fiji yes. of how uh, the last 16 years was uh, conducted. Right. But if only, if anything, to serve as a reminder to us all, so that. Uh, you know, the younger generation can can always uh, reflect on how not to, uh, you know, in terms of uh, leadership, uh, leadership with integrity. Mm -hmm. There are certain things that we've seen in the last 16 years uh, that we should not entertain mm -hmm. uh, anybody that, uh, you know, we're, we're just going to be around for four years, eight years, and then the next a lot of leaders will come, eh? mm -hmm. so and um, you know. But uh, what we need to do now is uh, try and develop a country that's learned from our past, yes. and try and uh, display good leadership to our young people, right. so that they can take the country to greater things. Eh? Right. You, know. you know, in the introduction of our discussion, yeah, you spoke about uh, the government being united, the three yes. parties. Yeah. So you know, I'm just going to ask you because this is mm. something that's uh, floating around in social yeah. media circles. Yeah. Uh, some, a, a lot of overseas commentators have also made, uh, mm. uh, you know, the same uh, sort of comments. Mm. Is the government united? Is oh, the other, other three parties united? Absolutely. Uh, the, you know, you, you, the best uh, uh, show of that was in the budget, you know, the you know, everybody was uh, happy with the budget. All 29 of us mm. voted in support of the budget. Mm. Uh, you know, when we selected the Prime Minister, only 28 of us uh, said yes, yes. to the Honorable Sitiwen mm. But now, the two, you know, the 29 are together. The, you know, the and you know the uh, you know the budget or the last eight months has really shown us the level of work that needs to be done to to you know re. Uh, calibrate or, or put our country on a new, better footing. Eh? Yeah. So uh, yeah, no. The I mean, I uh, you know we certainly work together closely with all uh, the DPMs. Right. Work very closely together, yeah. uh, and you know we uh, have uh, direct you know good discussions uh, all the time. Yeah. And, uh, so yeah, and as far as uh, certainly from where I sit. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, the, the the parties are working together. They're very solid. Yeah. Uh, yes, there's always areas for improvement, like yeah. with anything, even with marriages. Right. So uh, you know, but uh, you know, that said, yeah. I think uh, you know the coalition's uh, firm. We are working together. Yeah. Uh, we are you know happy that we've managed to pass a budget uh, that the country. Uh, has uh, accepted. Right. Uh, yes, we at the moment we are all a bit of pain for everybody. Yes. Um, uh, can blame the other guys for the pain, but uh, you know going forward, uh, you know the, you know the, you know we we are uh, looking at uh, creating you know that uh, uh, a new direction for Fiji. You know, um, and uh, you know for me it's. Uh, it's a great privilege to be in this position, eh? right. to uh, to be part of a, mm -hmm. the st at the start of a, something that can be very special for our country. Right. And, um, you and know, uh, yeah. you know, there's also been uh, uh, some discussion of um, leadership challenges within People's Alliance. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's no secret. Yeah. It's out on social media. People yeah. are talking about it. Sure. Uh, so. You know what can you uh, say to the people? Yeah, no, I mean, uh, you know, we're all behind the uh, honourable city of eh? right. uh, You know, uh, all of us we started this journey with him because we believed in, uh, 
uh, certainly his leadership and uh, also in the fact that uh, together we could uh, try and uh, build something better for Fiji. Right. Um, you know, the, and so that's the way we've been operating. Yes. Um, you know, the, everybody works hard. I mean, I'm. Uh, you know, the, you know, the leadership issue is not even a, con uh, you know, a consideration for me because there's so much uh, uh, work uh, in, you know, in front of us. Eh? Right. And uh, you know, the, um, you know, from the get-go, we've, uh, we've been supporting Honorable Rambuka. There's absolutely, I mean, maybe other people, but certainly from my case, yes. Um, there's not even the thought of uh, yes. any, you know, destabilization. Because eh? uh, again, it's uh, uh, it's very important that uh, we create stability in the country. Yes. So you know, the idea that uh, you know, you know, there's this internal um, machinations happening yeah. is. Uh, I think it's just uh, some people have uh, not much time, too no. much time on their hands, <laughs> and just uh, speculating. Eh? Yeah, but mm. very solid. Uh, everybody's uh, with the uh, honourable prime minister. Mm. He's doing an excellent job, and uh, uh, you know, again, I can list all the things that uh, he's done, starting with uh, unifying the, the region together, uh, and uh, you know, it's uh, so you know we. Mm. We're all uh, focused on, uh, at least in the next four years, doing some uh, very good things for our country. Thank you. Mm. And uh, folks, you heard it, the coalition government is in the business of getting on with the business and getting on with the job. <laughs> and uh, they're firmly uh, behind uh, Prime Minister Rambuka. Uh, Honourable Minister, thank you so much nice for joining you. us on the show. No well we look forward to having you back. Thank home. you, Felix. You thank like you. And uh, please visit our website, www.fijitimes.com, and our Facebook and Twitter pages as well to watch this interview in full and uh, to read all about the latest news in Fiji. Good night.